Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating dynamic floating paper in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based, and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link below for a free two month trial for the first 1000 people that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so we'll start by creating some sheets of paper. So we'll come up here and bring in a plane. And we don't want this to be square. So let's just tweak these dimensions so we get something a bit more rectangular. And we want to roughly be using real world scale. So let's make the width 75 centimeters and the height 50 centimeters. So we've roughly got something the size of a newspaper page. Okay, next we want to make sure we've got enough subdivisions in here to let us deform the mesh smoothly. So we'll need to see the lines of our geometry. So let's hit N on the keyboard, then B to show the lines. And we've already got a bunch of subdivisions in here, possibly too many. Paper is a bit more rigid than cloth, so we could probably bring these values down. Plus we'll have the added benefit of faster simulation times. And those polygons are nice and evenly distributed across our mesh now. So one piece of paper is a bit boring, so let's clone some more. With our plane selected, we'll grab a cloner object and we'll hold Alt when we click on that, so it's automatically applied. And we don't want these stacking up on top of each other, so we need to clone them onto the floor plane instead. So we could change the mode to honeycomb array and the orientation to the Y axis. And now we've got those pages spaced out nicely on the floor, but we probably don't need so many of them. So we'll bring down the count in both directions. And then we can bring them in closer to each other with the size options here. Let's just pick some values here and we'll get the best results if none of these guys are overlapping or intersecting. All right, so we don't need to see the polygons anymore. So we'll hit N and to go back to our normal shaded mode, we want to hit A. Okay, so now we can make these dynamic. So we'll right click on our cloner and head over to the simulation tags. We're going to make these soft bodies, which now if we hit play, should fall straight down with gravity. So we'll need to bring in a floor that they can rest on. So we'll come up here and grab one of those. And to have our papers interact with the floor, we need to right click on it as well. And we'll make it a collider body. Okay, so now we wanna apply some wind to our papers so they can float away. So with our clone selected, we'll go to the simulate menu, down to forces, and we'll just tear this off so we can get a good look at all the forces we've got to choose from. And I think in this case, we're probably best going with the wind. Now we'll give this a play and see how that's affecting things. We've definitely got some wind in there, but it doesn't seem to be powerful enough. Let's pause that. We also want the wind to be blowing upward so we can lift these guys off the ground. So let's grab this wind icon and we can just manually rotate it so the arrow, which indicates the direction of the wind, is pointing up. And then we can grab our wind force and tweak some of these settings. Let's bring the wind speed up to 75, and we want a bit of variation in the air, so we'll also introduce some turbulence. Let's see what that looks like. And that doesn't look very realistic. It's all just going straight up together, so I need to add some more randomness to the air. So we'll try bringing in another force. Let's go with some rotation. And we'll even bring the power of that up to 100. And give that a try. And that's looking a bit more interesting, but if we zoom out a tad, those papers are behaving a little bit strangely and there's a lot of intersecting happening. Let's just take another quick look. I think we may have to tweak our simulation settings to fix this. So we'll grab our soft body tag, 
and under the force tab, there's a little section called aerodynamics. And we've done another tutorial a while back where we look into this in a lot more depth. And I'll put a link to that one down below if you wanna go and check that out. But for now, let's start by making this two-sided. So the dynamics will be applied to both sides of our planes. Then we'll add a bit of drag and bring the lift way up. So let's see what that gives us. All right, so we've stopped that intersecting, but it's still behaving a little bit weird. And I think this is because the rotation force is rotating on the wrong axis. So if we grab that, let's rotate it this way, 90 degrees. And try that. And our paper is now rotating around this way, so we're definitely getting there. Let's pause that. And I wanna make the rotation a bit more intense. And before we sim that again, I just wanna randomize our papers a bit so they aren't all facing the same way. So we'll grab our cloner and head over to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a random effector. Then we want the parameter tab and we don't wanna randomize the position, so we'll turn that off. And instead, we'll randomize the rotation. And we'll just tweak this value till we get something that looks a little less uniform. All right, let's frame this up a bit and try that. And there you go, we've got our flying papers twisting around in the wind. And you could do loads of cool things with this, maybe use it as a transition, or if you wanted to get really creative, you could hand animate some of these papers and form maybe a logo or something. Totally up to you. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial, just a nice short one this week. As usual, you can download the project file at the link below and you can grab the full Octane render ready project files for this tutorial and all of our other tutorials on our Patreon page. And they include all the lighting, materials and render setups in Octane. Also, a big shout out to this month's patrons. You guys are the best. And without your support, we definitely couldn't bring you all of these tutorials. Thanks guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.